Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question, and the question in question was, Frederick, how do I become a good backend developer? So let's get into it. Well, this is a big question, a very, very, very big question, so I can only touch on the things that I think are probably the most relevant for, well, for backend developers. So one of the first things that you really need to have a good understanding of in order to be a good backend developer is architecture. So the actual bare bone basics of coding is just one part of learning how to be a good backend developer. But most of what you're going to find is that you're, you're going to spend a lot of time maintaining a fairly large system. And in order for you to understand how to do that in an effective manner, it is vital that you understand not only software architecture at the code level, but also at the infrastructure level with services and distributed system, monoliths, all this stuff. All these people who come and like throw out the term microservices and think monoliths are like bullshit have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And that is the, like knowing the differences and knowing when one solution is better than another, that is architecture, like making informed decisions, not going on a hype train or a trend way with everybody else. So that is one of the first things. And in order for, I would strongly suggest that you have a look at a fairly old book called Domain Driven Design. It will teach you one of the most important lessons when it comes to being good at software architecture. And that's all I'm going to say. You can have a look at the book. It's going to help you a lot in your career. I can promise you that. Second, apart from having a good understanding of architecture and, you know, good practices and all that good stuff, is going to be to understand business requirements, to have a really, really strong and good understanding of how the things that you are building co correlates to the business. Because if you are bad at communi communicating with your stakeholders or other domain experts, because it's very unlikely that you are going to work on a system where you are the only person who, you know, who's maintaining that and you're the only person who basically dictates how it's going to work, it's very likely that you're going to have business partners or other employees around in the office who have a say in these matters and your ability to effectively communicate with these people and make them understand the limitations and like the considerations that you, that you have to make and the stuff that they have to like and understand their side of the whole thing is absolutely vital because the system that you are building is a reflection of the company itself and that ties into this domain driven design mindset that I've I touched on earlier. So that I will say is the absolute, one of the most important parts after that. Understanding, I cannot stress enough how important, it, how important it is for you to have a business mindset. You need to understand the business because you cannot build a good system without understanding the business. It's, it, it, it's well, it, it's that important, I would say. And lastly, I would say that in order for you to be a good backend developer, having a well, having a pragmatist mindset is a very good thing as well. It's, uh, and I would say that this has it. This is, uh, this is, not just for backend developers. This is true for all areas of software development. Being a pragmatist and trying to keep things as simple as possible is a very key component into all of this, because it's. It's extremely likely that the system over time will grow to be just, you know, it's going to grow exponentially complicated. And having an understanding or like an, kind of acknowledging that all like immediately and understanding that writing soft, good software is not about being smart. It's not about trying to be clever or impress anybody with your code or trying to you know, flame somebody in a code review because they're not using single quotes or like whatever they're doing, right? It's, that's just not productive behavior. And being able to understand that and trying to go for simplicity as much as possible and sustainability is a much more, it's a better bet because the, like, the it's inevitable. It doesn't matter how amazing software you write, you are going to have a system that is so complicated that not one, uh, that no one single person 
can, can have it all in their heads. That's the sort of system sizes we're talking about when you work for a company that actually makes money from something. I mean, even the small apps that you may have on your phone are likely more complicated than, and like, than one person can actually understand. So, uh, there are exceptions, of course, but having that mindset to just be a pragmatist, it, you know, software development, it's not about you trying to impress somebody, it's not about you, it's not about the craft, it is about delivering business value, it is about money, it is about you shipping code that is sustainable and that is a very good fit and a very good reflection of the needs of the company that you are working for. And that is very contextual. Some people don't like this because the purists among us feel as often, at least from my perspective, from what I can see, they feel like the craft of software development is more important than the business value that it provides. And that is not true. I'm sorry to say we are, build, we are making software in order to produce a result, solve a problem for a company of some sort. It, and that is the harshness of the reality. If you just want to write software because you enjoy writing clean, nice code, then you have to do that on your own time, most likely, or get a job where this is something that is encouraged. So I, I, yeah, that's probably what I want you to take away from this. So what I want you to take away from this is that first and foremost, in order for you to be a good backend developer, you need to have a really good understanding of software architecture. That is absolutely key. Learning how to write code is just the basics. Learning how to use the correct network protocols or like the right, the right architecture for your infrastructure, if it's microservices or just services or monoliths or whatever, that is extremely important because I can, trust me, every single c company has a different setup, all of them. They call them, they use the same term sometimes, but the, all of it looks different. And the way that the business wants things to work is going to be a very, you, you're going to see a strong connection between the way that the business works and how the code is actually structured at their architectural level. And not just at the network level, of course, but also at the code level and having a good clean architecture. Second thing, and th these three, they all kind of tie together, you know. The second part is to understand the business, have a business mindset. You will see, I promise you that you will see that the way that the company works is a reflect, the code is a reflection of that. So just, you know, have best practices with you, learn how to write things really, really well. But you need to, you need to remember that the, the way that you structure your code should be a good fit for the company. It doesn't matter what some person on the internet says or some book tells you if that's a bad fit for your company. That's why you need to be able to make an informed decision and have a really strong, good understanding of the company and its needs because that's when you can make the really good decisions on behalf of the company, regardless of what those are. They might be bad decisions in the, in the eyes of some idealist TikTok person somewhere, but that doesn't matter because they're not working at your company. Anywho, the last part is to have a really pragmatic mindset to understand that you are writing software for a purpose of some sort. It's not about being like, having flawless code reviews and pushing for the absolute best practices. It's about shipping value and structuring things in such a way that it enables other people to be productive. It's about simply you know, write the simplest code that you can write because nobody, like honest to God, nobody cares how clever you are, especially not when your clever code turns out to become, turns into legacy because of some unforeseen new requirement that your super solution doesn't accommodate. I've been there many times. I've seen people who are praised for their genius, and I can already see. I, I already know that once this is in, once their genius solution is in, once it's once it's in, it's going to stay there. And I can all I, I already know from previous experience that it's just a matter of time before it becomes a big issue for the company. It's happened so many times that it's not, like it's almost a self fulfilling prophecy. So don't make that mistake. Try to write things as simple as you can possibly make them. Loose coupling, all of this good stuff. These are good practices to follow. And I'll give you one last one. And that is to remember that software is not about, uh, the software is not about software. Code is not about code. It is about solving a business problem. Keep that with you and the rest will start to fall into place once you get a little bit of experience. Have a great day.